Although there's still a lot of arguing between gamers who prefer the power of a PC and those who prefer the convenience of a console, one thing most of us can agree on is that any particular title should just plain work as advertised, regardless of the platform, be it PC, Xbox, PlayStation, or Atari 2600. But unfortunately, there's been a noticeable trend over the years in which games initially developed for console just don't translate that well to the PC. And when these games drop on Steam, they might have wonky controls, underwhelming visuals, or even outright game-breaking bugs. So why does this happen? Well, a huge part of the issue is that at any given time, there are only really about three or four major living room consoles. And aside from minor updates every two years or so, every single Xbox One or PlayStation 4 in existence is using the exact same hardware inside. This means that developers writing games for these platforms know exactly what configurations and APIs they're coding for, making it easy to optimize performance and functionality for that specific device, especially as consoles tend to have exclusive developer features to make programming for them even more straightforward. PCs, on the other hand, present an additional challenge in that games must be written to work on an enormous variety of different computers. And although the dominant setup is a modern 64-bit version of Windows and a CPU and GPU from one of just two different manufacturers each, there's still tons of variation in terms of performance, driver revisions, and what other kinds of hardware and software are installed. And remember that on a PC, games are sharing resources like memory and CPU time with other programs to a far greater extent than on a console that was built to consistently prioritize gameplay. And because of all these factors, every time a game is installed on another PC, chances are high that it's a brand new environment the game has never actually seen before. So the game's code has to be adjusted to work with general technologies, such as DirectX and the x86 instruction set, which can be an imperfect solution that, as we know, doesn't work flawlessly on every PC every time. And even to get it as close as possible can be very time consuming, as sometimes tens of thousands of files have to be rewritten to play nicely with an NVIDIA or AMD desktop graphics driver instead of some specialized API that was specifically designed for the PlayStation 4, meaning that PC ports also add months to development time, which, by the way, costs money. Money that many game studios would rather spend on making new games, marketing existing ones, new DLC, or heck, why not ice cream at that point? And since consoles are generally underpowered compared to current gen gaming computers, games originally developed for consoles are often designed to be less graphically demanding. So, creating more high def visuals for you know, whiny vocal minority customers with top-of-the-line graphics cards like GTX 1080s and RX 580s can also result in months of additional work. And this, combined with the translation of visual elements so PC APIs and drivers can understand them, has resulted in more than a handful of games looking like a mess on a computer. And of course, a game being written for a certain console means it was also written with a specific controller scheme in mind, meaning that the experience may not map well to a keyboard and mouse. And although the concept of simply mapping a controller button to a keyboard key seems very simple, this process can still involve modifying a great deal of code under the hood.
The good news is that while there are still plenty of bad PC ports floating around, consoles have been moving towards more PC-like architectures, and tools like Microsoft's new Universal Windows platform might make porting games, at least from Xbox to PC, much less labor-intensive, as games written for UWP, like Gears of War 4, don't have to be rewritten for desktop computers. But with that said, at least for now, underwhelming ports are just part of the price you pay for being a member of the PCMR. Do you need a gorgeous, powerful, simple, and reliable website? Squarespace is the way to go. You just pick one of their gorgeous templates that works great whether you're on a desktop or a mobile device. They're all scalable with responsive design, and it's all a, a cloud-based tool that you basically just go, yeah, okay, uh, my picture there, my text there, customize a little bit of this, use their logo designer there. Oh no, I don't know what to do. I contact their 24-7 support via live chat and email, and boom, website. And it starts at just 12 bucks a month with a free domain thrown in if you buy Squarespace for the year. Every website comes with tons of great features, including a free online store and new for this summer, there are 16 new templates to choose from. So start a trial with no credit card required and start building your website today. Then, when you sign up for Squarespace, make sure you use offer code TECHQUICKIE to get 10% off your first purchase. So thanks for watching, guys. Like, dislike, leave a comment, check out our other channels, and don't forget to subscribe.